Hello YouTube family, we are back again with another video and today we're going to answer a question that I have been receiving lately and that is, how do you finish batches faster? doing instacart so that's what we're going to answer today if you guys are new then please make sure to smash the subscribe button and also ring that bell and by doing that then you'll always be notified every time we decide to drop a brand new video on this channel so right now we're just doing side hustles you know side gigs and you know gig work videos but we will do more vlogging we'll do more you know challenges maybe some skits or whatnot but this is just a channel that we we could just do everything on so I really want to help you guys out today and I'm going to go and tell you guys what I do to finish these batches faster as an Instacart shopper. So make sure to smash the like button and I, that would really be appreciated, all right? So let's get into step number one. So you've already accepted the batch, you already have the batch lined up and you just arrived at the grocery store. The first thing that I do at the grocery store is, I don't know what they're called, I guess you can call them cart racks or like cart sections. You know the section where you go, you leave with your groceries and then you put the cart back after you're done packing up your car. Yeah, I park next to those, okay? Always park next to those, it's easy so you don't have to run all the way back. If you like to run all the way back, then I would say park next, closer to the front of the store, but a lot of the times I'm not getting a spot closer to the front of the store. So I park next to a cart rack and that is step one. Step two that I do is I always sit in the car for at least about another three more minutes. And then this is where I start to calculate a game plan. So I look at all the items that I have to collect in this store and I start to make like kind of like a map to where what am I going to go for first, what am I going for second, and then what am I going to finish out with. So I do the, you know, frozen stuff later, so I, I go to that last. So I'm kind of navigating my way through the store mentally before I even step foot in the store. So just so I know exactly where I'm going to go, possibly how long it's going to take me and all that. I, I can answer all that right before I even go into the store. The next thing I do is I go to my trunk or my back seat and I grab my two insulated bags. I always keep two. Sometimes you can keep a third just in case somebody orders like a rotisserie chicken. You wanna keep your hots away from your colds so the customer will receive a warm rotisserie chicken instead of uh, ice bird, you feel me? So you, you want to pay attention to that. But typically, I only go in with two insulated bags. If you need those big insulated bags and you have nowhere to find them, if you don't want to go to Walmart or whatever, then have them shipped to you on Amazon. I do have a link down below. This is my Amazon influencer store. I have everything that you could possibly imagine in this store. So the link will be down below in the description. Go check it out you'll be surprised at all the things that I have in there. And we're gonna be making updates to that store very soon. Majority of the time when I go into the store, the first thing that I go to do is I complete the list for all of the produce. I wanna complete everything in the produce section first because that typically takes me the longest time because you have to check the quality of the produce. You have to weigh it sometimes. Like there's a lot of things that I have to do that I don't do for everything else, like, you know, the cookies and all that other stuff. So it's a lot easier for me to attack the produce first, since that does typically take me the longest time in the batch. And then I, after I finish that, I attack everything else. So after I do the produce, that is where I go and, you know, the easy stuff like the peanut butter, the cookies, the bread, like all the extra stuff like the chips, the soda, I do that. Those are all going to be like in the middle aisles pretty much. So everything that's pretty much not refrigerated, I'm, I'm attacking that first. And then after we're done with that, that is when I decide to go to the refrigerator. That's when I will go and get the milk, the orange juice, the cheese. So it has a little bit less of a waiting time in the cart while I'm shopping for everything else. So for somebody watching the video, you might ask me, when do I go and pick up the meats? I typically pick up the meats when I'm picking up all the other refrigerated stuff. I just don't like refrigerated items sitting in the cart too long, especially if I can't find, you know, a certain cookie or something 
or I got to wait for the customer to tell me if they want a replacement or if they just want their refund. You know what I'm saying? So I try to keep all the colds as cold as possible. The only exception is, of course, the produce, but we keep all that in the insulated bags anyway. I put everything in the insulated bags and um, we try to keep that at least chill because it's usually open nine times out of ten. But, you know. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> so what's worked for me after I get the milk, the cheese, the eggs, that's usually when I go to the frozen section. Sometimes I go to the frozen section before I go to get the milk, cheese, and eggs, but it's kind of all up on you. There's not really too much frozen stuff that people get in my area, I guess. I'm not really in the frozen section that often. Maybe somebody will get like two pizzas, but that doesn't really take me too long, okay? Usually all the pizzas are with each other, all the potatoes or the fries or the tater tots are with each other. So it's very easy to find these products, like the 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 microwave meals and all that stuff. So that's typically easy. So I kind of save that for last. If not, I do it right before I go to the refrigerator section. So it's, it's really dependent on you. I guess you can say there's a wrong way to shop, but it, it's really up on you and your comfortability and you know what makes it fast for you you know what i'm saying so that's just this is just what i do but this is usually how i kind of figure out my way around the store and i complete a single order now if you have a double order it'll be pretty much the same exact process but you'll have to be a little bit more strategic and organized because you'll have to be splitting your cart in half okay you want to make sure that you are organized on these double and maybe even multiple batch orders just because if you're not organized it is going to cost you a lot of time when you hit that register because now you got to go back into your batch you got to look at what is in group a what is in group b then you got to separate everything that is a headache i've seen an instacart shopper do that and i just felt so bad because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress because you got a line behind you the the cashier is like yo like what and then if they scan the wrong thing you got to tell them to give you the little refund back bro it, it, it's bad so don't sit there and not be organized because it, it it will hurt you and it'll it'll cost you a lot of time at the end the one thing i can recommend for you guys that are having trouble out there with these multiple batches or these multiple order batches cart dividers cart dividers are something that is very simple it, it's literally easy to bring into the store and just have a cart divider in your cart bro and they're in my Amazon influencer store. So if you want to check that out, then link is already down below for you guys in the description. After you've gathered all of your items, now it's time to cash out. Please make sure that you have your card before you even hop out the card to do your batch. You should always have your card. I always had it on a clip on my belt loop so I never had to dig in my wallet or anything else like that. It was always in front of me and I always knew where it was. But when you hit the checkout line, you want to try to help the cashier out a little bit. After a while, the cashiers will start to recognize you and then sometimes they'll even put the different orders in different color bags for you. I know they're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to ask for that but I never had to ask for that. Sometimes they just want to help you out just because they see you so often, you know what I mean? So sometimes employees at Food Lion were seeing me three or four times a day. You know what I'm saying? We were really grinding, okay? We were really grinding, but when you get to the checkout line, I typically like to make sure the barcodes are easy to find. So either I put the barcodes up so the cashier can find the barcodes easier or I direct the barcodes to the cashier so there's never a thing where they gotta flip the whatever around and find the barcode themselves. So I try to be as helpful and as respectful as possible and it'll truly help you out in the long run. But um, usually I, I, I hope I don't have to tell you guys how to put groceries on the conveyor belt but if you need it i usually put all the things that aren't going to be crushed on the conveyor belt first and then that's when you put your chips your bread your eggs just in case okay just in case because before i was not a shopper at all okay i was going in there for a couple items and that was it so i could just throw items on there but now that i'm shopping for other people you got to make sure that you're you know organized and make sure your eggs not getting cracked on the way to the customer because 
you're not gonna get a good rating after that. <laughs> now, after all of the items are bagged up in each group, or you know, if it's only one order, then I would put all of those bags, I would tie the bags so nothing can fall out. I will put those bags into my insulated bags, and then I will push my cart straight to the car, drop my two insulated bags into the car, and then push the cart into the cart rack, and then I am off. Either that's the point where you message your customer saying you're on your way for delivery or you just head to the customer for delivery because they'll be able to see you on their map. So yeah, that, that is truly everything that I do to make sure that I am doing the fastest, most accurate job that I can do to ensure higher tips and you know ratings and all that stuff. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, then please smash a like on this video because I, I just want to help you guys out and also leave a comment on what you guys want to see next on this channel. If there's any questions that you guys have, maybe I can make a video on that to further kind of elaborate on some of the, the methods or some of the ideas that I have that could possibly make your job a lot easier as an Instacart shopper. But if you guys are brand new to the channel and you guys like what you see in this video, we have plenty more on the channel. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and also ring the bell because we're going to have a lot of content on this channel. So I don't want you guys to miss out. On this end card screen, I have a couple videos that you might actually want to watch especially if you're concerned about either maximizing on your tips earning more money or even becoming a better instacart shopper in 2022 make sure to watch these videos i have a whole playlist so go check those out and uh thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video